Hi there, this is your screencast on equations and motions. This is the second one uh, from IB Physics Topic 2 from the core curriculum. So let's talk about it, the equations and motions. We'll start with some conventions. The IB uses these symbols. Now, depending on where you look, if you go and look online or in another textbook, you're probably going to see some, some different uh, variables or symbols used for these quantities. Uh, for example, this initial velocity, it's very common. Some textbooks you use like V naught uh, as the initial, or V sub I with a little I subscript to mean initial as the initial velocity. IB uses this U, so you just need to be aware of that. Some uh, textbooks use uh, the letter D for displacement. Here we'll use S. Okay, so you, you should be um, tolerant of these changing, and when you see them in the equation, you should recognize in the equation, recognize what they are in the equation by you know their position in the equation, and this is just going to happen throughout your your you know, high school and college career. Sorry, so let's uh, put these to use. So we have equations of motions. We have our first one. This one's not in the data book that I, IB gives you on, on your tests, um, but it's kind of straightforward, so it shouldn't be too hard. It says the velocity is some initial velocity plus the product of acceleration and time. Right? So this is just a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, Okay, where your slope here is your acceleration and your x is really uh, time, is your uh, independent variable here. Here's another that you do get this equation here, the second one in IB. This tells you that the displacement is this average velocity, right? This is the final and initial velocity, the sum of them divided by two. That gives you the average velocity. If you multiply that by time, you get displacement. So, right? so average velocity times time is displacement. Again, this is just your standard distance equals rate times time in disguise. Okay. Here it is again, distance equals the rate times time. So this is your initial velocity, and if you do not have any acceleration, that is you're moving at constant speed, then this is all you would use here. It's all you would need, distance equals rate times time. If you have acceleration, however, you must add this term. So one half times the acceleration times the square of the time. So this produces a parabolic motion. And our last equation is a time-independent equation. You notice there's no t in here. So we got this one by combining this third one and this first one and substituting in. And we'll get this here. This can be very handy. So remember that. You do get this one in the, the data book. OK, let's uh, try an example. So we have a Dodge Viper starts from rest. That means it's initially at zero velocity and accelerates over a quarter mile, about four tenths of a kilometer. It takes six seconds. So we need to find the acceleration. So we're given the initial velocity. The time is six seconds. The displacement is 400 meters. We need the acceleration. So you need to find an equation that we can use that has all these terms uh, involved in it. And I'll let you do that. If you want to work this out, you can pause your video. OK, so here come the, the answers. So we're going to use this equation. And if we rearrange that to get solve this for a, the acceleration, we get something that looks like this right here. And then we plug in our numbers, and we get 22.22 meters per second squared as the acceleration. And if we look carefully using significant uh, digits, we need to report our answer with two significant digits. So we should say 22. So let's do uh, another example, which is you know second part of the same problem. Let's find the Viper's final final speed. So we have to remember what we were, were given here. So we have all this information there. So you need to pick an equation that you can find the final speed. That would be the V. So I'll let you do that if you want to pause your video. Okay, so here we go. Our velocity, and we'll use this equation here. This can give us the, um, the final velocity, and nicely it's already set up. We don't have to rearrange it, so we'll just plug in the values. Here's our acceleration times the time. Initial velocity zero. We get 133 and a third meters per second. And we need to report that to two significant figures again. So 130 would be our final answer. Notice you could also you have used this equation. So if you chose that one instead, that's fine. Okay, one more example. After this, the, uh, the Viper is going to break. It's going to slow down over a distance of 200 meters. And in, during that time, it's going to reduce its speed down to, from 130 to 70 meters per second. So we want to know the braking acceleration. We have to find that. So they were given this. <clears throat> and here's our 
ending velocity, here's our initial velocity. And this time is really no longer useful to us because the six seconds has elapsed and we're breaking now, so we're not going to use that. Uh, but our displacement was 400 meters, so we can use the time independent equation. So rearrange that. And if you solve for that, you should get something that looks like this. And notice that your acceleration is negative. So you get about negative 32.2 meters per second squared. And we need to, here we have, looks like we have one significant. Uh, digit one there also so our answer should should be reported with one so we're going to have to say our final answer is negative 30 meters per second squared okay so these are examples of like a car and you can control the acceleration you know forward and backward by stepping on the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal or brake as it's called right there's another convenient source of acceleration in the vertical direction Right here, our cars can produce that acceleration more conveniently. If you don't have a car, you can get some acceleration from something called g, which is gravity. It is constant, depends on what planet or celestial body you're on. Let's see a little bit more about it. Little g on Earth is about a little under 10 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of gravity on or near the surface of the Earth. This acts vertically, that is downward, and we're going to use this value for acceleration when we have objects in free fall. For example, so a rock is dropped off a cliff, hits the ground two seconds later. How high is the cliff? So those same equations uh, of motion apply, but we're now in the, the vertical direction. So we have a distance here, and we have a time. So what equation involves distance and time? What can we use? I'll let you pause your video if you want to work it out. Okay. There it goes. So we're going to use this equation here. We know the initial velocity is zero. It started at rest. And we use one half. And now our g, our acceleration has become g. Time is two seconds, and we get 19.6 meters, and we should be careful of uh, significant digits. Looks like we have two, so our answer would be 20 meters. So you might be asking, well, I thought you just told me it was, it was downward. Should we use negative 9.8 or maybe 9.81? Well, in this case, we're traveling in, the ball's traveling in one direction. And so if you put in a negative 9.8, that will work. That will tell you that the displacement is, you know, 20 meters below where you started. So it has some information that makes sense there. But if you're talking about like a, a height or which in the terms of a length, you're really talking about a scalar quantity or a distance, which would be positive. So if we want to say h is a distance, we just say positive 20 meters. But you could also say 9.8. And you can use 9.81. That would work too. I frequently use just a 10. For gravity and if you have any doubts about that uh, just ask if it's okay to use 10. So we need to just be careful with the signs. Let's take a um, slightly different example of this ball. Uh, it's on the cliff again but it is tossed straight up first and then it goes all the way down so it looks something like that. Bang. It takes four seconds. It was thrown up with an initial velocity here. How high is the cliff? Can we really find uh, the height of the cliff now? So if you want to try and work that out, you can go for it. Pause your video. Okay, so here comes the, uh, the answer. So we know the initial velocity is 3. In this case, the acceleration that is g, we do need to change the sign. Right, because the initial velocity is in the upward direction and gravity is accelerating us in the downward direction. So we need to specify a different sign in there. The time is four seconds. The equation we can use is the same one. Okay, so we're just going to be careful. Put in a positive three here. There's our four seconds. And now we put in our negative, right, our negative value of g since it's so it's pulling downward. And we so the so the final height is negative, so it's negative 66.4 meters. Uh, significant digits, well, it'd be 62. So we want to report 66 meters. It would be the, the distance for the, the bottom to the top. OK, so let's talk about g. What else can we do with g? It turns out we can dilute it. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, g is a constant, right? So 
maybe that's not so good. With our car, we could just push on the gas pedal or the brake. We could kind of control our acceleration. Well, Galileo had an idea about diluting or changing gravity. He could make it weaker. Well, he did that with a ramp. And how you do that is right, you make a, a, a ramp like this, and you can like put a cart on it. You put an angle, put it at an angle, and you can put a cart on it. Boom, and it will go down slowly. If you think you make this angle very slight, right, it will come down slowly. If you make it angle very large, it'll drop with close to the value of gravity. So you can kind of control your acceleration. Uh, you can control your acceleration of gravity by the angle of your ramp. Okay, that does it for this section. Thanks.